Hey, what's going on everybody? Chad Allen here, Firechild video, back to the basics, episode five. We've made it a long way and now it's time to take a look at the basics behind materials and texturing. This is an area you're going to spend most of your life when working with Blender. You can have the greatest model in the world, but if your materials and textures are crap, your render's gonna be, guess what, crap. So, um, it's very good for you to practice materials and textures, and I'm just gonna show you some of the basics because I could talk for hours on this stuff. So, uh, here's our basic model, and if we go into our, uh, you also notice that I curve modeled this, so, the top view, you can see we've just got our extruded curve model. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to our material section and you'll see immediately there's nothing here. That's because we need to add a material. Now, different objects, say for example, watch, if we click new material, it's going to give us just our base material, but if I add an object, say we've got a cube for some odd reason in our scene, you'll see with the cube selected, it's back to being blank because we'd have to add a separate material for our cube object. So you click over here and it's material.002. Always label your materials. That's very important. So we'll go Blender. Oop. I don't know why I got my caps lock on. Blender logo. And that way, if we click over here, if we want to give this cube the same material as our Blender logo, we can click this little circle and grab it from the pull down, which ignore these other materials that are in here. These are from previous experiments I did. So we could grab Blender logo. Bam. So if we change this, it changes whatever's assigned that material. So interesting to know. So we'll do that, you know, and then we can give it its own base material and call it box. You know, it just makes things easier when you've got a whole bunch of stuff going on at the same time. And it would probably also be beneficial if you went in here and changed, you know, the name of your curves, the name of your stuff there. And we'll call it logo. So there, now it's labeled logo. You can find it real quick if you had to go through, you know, and pick different things. So back to materials. Let's delete our cube. We don't need it. Back in. Okay, so with our uh, logo selected, you can change it to whatever color you want. Or you could even go into top view, turn back on our background image here, and Z to wireframe. And we can assign it by clicking diffuse here. We can assign it the color of our logo. So that just makes it makes it a little bit better, which is good. However, if you notice, our logo has two separate colors. The inner circle is a separate color from the outer circle. And we want to be able to separate those. So how do you apply different materials to the same uh, object? In this case, a curve, or if you're using a mesh, whatnot. Real easy to do. All you have to do is go in and select the part that you want to be a different color. Like I want this center circle. If you had a mesh, you would have a whole bunch of vertices and faces. You would select the faces that you want different. In my case, I'm just selecting my points of my curve. And then what we can do is we can go over here and add a new and click this number two because this is telling you that two object, two places are using the same material. So I'll click that to create a new one. As you can see, it relabeled it Blender Logo 0.001. And we'll call this inner circle. If I can spell. And then we can change the color of this one. If we go into top view here, and we can change the diffuse color to match our inner color. Now, nothing happens to our mesh yet because what we need to do is we need to hit assign. With our point selected, we need to hit this button right here with our inner circle material highlighted. Bam. And there you go. And let's out. Oh, things are acting weird today. Let's get rid of that. Close that. So there, now we have our two different colors. Well, that is so weird. It's not letting me uh, rotate around for some reason. Hmm. I think my center mouse might be jacked. Ah, things are running really slow because of the screen capture recording, so that sucks. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, we've got our two different colors. That's basics. You know, you've got your specularity. You can adjust how bright your hotspot is. Use your preview window here. How intense it is. The hardness of it. You know, experiment around with those different things. Different materials are going to call for different settings. You know, there's plenty of resources. Just look up. Uh, you know, uh, Blender Material Repository. Um, 
find everything you need to know google how to make uh glass how to make whatever uh, i even have a tutorial on my youtube channel and on firechildvideo.blogspot.com covering how to make a realistic gold material and we'll go a lot more in depth into these panels here you know your transparency your mirror all that so that's basic uh basic material stuff let's move on to basic texturing because uh in the original example in my previous tutorials uh, we had a, just a basic gold, and I actually had it all the same color, but this one, let's make a, reflect, a reflection. So textures are a great way to add detail. You can add bump mapping, you know, to make it uh, look like it's made out of woven fabric, or if you watch my uh, realistic football tutorial, we go into making that uh, football leather texture, and uh, that's all done in the textures panel. So let's go ahead and add a new texture. And what we want to do is we want to add a reflection to this, so we're going to add a basically a reflection map, an HDR image map. So image or movie, these are the settings I'm going through here are the most important you're, you're going to use while texturing. So you're going to go to image or movie, or you can use procedural textures, which we'll get in some other day. You know, blend, marble, you know, all these different Stucky, Veroni, all these different things. For, for this, let's go ahead and just add a simple image or movie. We'll get into procedural textures some other time. And I'm going to add just an image here. It's an HDR image. Open it and give it a second. And then the other things that you're going to use pretty much every time you're texturing is you want to tell it mapping. You want to tell it coordinates. A lot of times you're going to be UV unwrapping things, which is more advanced stuff. You know, So here you would set it UV unwrap. You've got your global, all these different uh, things. We're making a reflection, so we're going to set our coordinates to reflection and projection sphere. So something like that. And this tells you what your image is. You know, you can load a new image by clicking here. And go down. And this is important right here. This is our influence. We want this is where we tell Blender what we want, the texture we have to influence. And for example, it's set for color right now. So what it's gonna do if we render is it's gonna give this funky. And right now you'll see I have it actually set up to where I'm only applying the texture to that inner circle. Because remember I have two materials here. So I would have to apply the same texture uh, here to the outer one with the same thing. But see, it basically uses it as the diffuse color, which is not what we want for a good reflection. What we want for a good reflection is we want, let's go back, yeah. What we want is, oops, I'm going to change that back to reflection, back to sphere. So we want it to be a mirror. So we'll turn off color, we'll turn on our mirror settings. You've also got emit, ambient, you've got all these different settings. Normal settings, that's where your bump mapping is. If you have normal maps or bump maps, this is the setting you turn on to give it that bump mapped effect. But uh, for reflection, I actually don't want it too reflective. And then we need to go over here and we need to turn on mirror. So see, you're going to be doing a lot of bouncing back and forth. Really all I'm doing with the mirror setting is just bringing up the reflectivity and that gives us, you know, gives us something to work with. See, obviously there's more settings we need to play with, but that, you know, that's the basics. You know, you apply your material. I showed you how to apply separate materials to the same object. I showed you the most important part of texturing. Now with textures, if you go into your world tab and then click on texture, you can add a texture that applies to the world which, uh, you know, that's handy to have. So, uh, you know, we assign our material and then we want to apply a texture to that material. So if you have more than one material on your mesh, you know, whichever one's highlighted, that's the one you're texturing. You can add a whole bunch of different textures here, uh, you know, blend them together to create some really complex stuff. There's great tutorials on texturing out there. This is just the basics. So I hope you guys uh, found something useful. Go into your material settings now know that uh, diffuse color, you know what specular does, you know you know what mirror does, and uh, just poke around, find some things, uh, you don't know what it does, give it a shot. Um, hopefully this has given you a good foundation, I tended to ramble a little bit in this one, but uh, hopefully you guys uh, understand the basics now and where you need to go to uh, do some basic modeling and texturing. Of course texturing, uh, man, there is just so much that's possible with this, it's unbelievable. So. 
I will leave it to you guys to experiment, get comfortable with the interface, because that's what this is about, getting comfortable with the interface and then moving forward. So uh, we'll see you guys again for the last part of this Back to the Basics, which is rendering. So uh, hope you enjoyed this. On to uh, the final part, part six. Take it easy.